All right. So once again, thank you guys for participating. And as I'm going through these tips, if you have questions, there is a chat feature down at the bottom of your screen. So just make sure that you hit chat, type in your message, and then I'll respond to it as I get an opportunity to. But again, I wanted to mention to you guys that the reason why I'm doing this is because there are many people that come to me, especially around the holiday season, and tell, tell me that they're struggling with spending too much, they're drinking too much, they're eating too much, and they just have an abundance of stress that they ordinarily wouldn't have during the rest of the year for other holidays. One of the reasons why I chose to even pursue health and wellness for myself, and a lot of people don't, don't know this, uh, one of the reasons why I chose to pursue it for myself is because when I had my daughter at the age of 30, I just noticed that I was gaining weight and I didn't want to have to go out and buy all new clothes. I wanted to be able to still rock my same cute little outfit set that I had been accustomed to wearing in my 20s. And some people, they, they get into the health and wellness world simply because they have health issues. And so it kind of forces them into this world because they want to take care of their health so that they don't get sickly or that they don't prematurely die at an early age. For me, it was something I actually enjoyed, but because I wasn't overweight, I didn't always value healthy food. So because I didn't value healthy food, it was nothing for me to, I always joke about this, but I'm serious. It was nothing for me to drink a gallon of Kool-Aid with five tons of sugar in it or eat a bag of Doritos or eat the little Debbie snacks that some of you probably know about. It was nothing because for me, it was like, okay, I'm not gaining weight. And I was physically active enough. I liked going outside and riding bikes and doing gymnastics and stuff like that. So I was physically active enough that I just didn't value health. But when I had my daughter, I started to notice that my clothes weren't fitting the same way that they were before she was born. And when I went online to look up tips on how to reduce belly fat and how to um, just feel more energized. At that time, my daughter was in daycare and, and my son was two and a half years older than her. So they were both in daycare. After daycare was over, I was the one that was going to the nearest Burger King. There was one about five, five miles away, not even five miles, about five minutes actually away from their daycare. I was the one that was going to the Burger King every day after picking them up from their, their daycare program on the way home. And by the time I got home, I was full off of the Whopper Jr. and I didn't feel like I had to make a healthy meal. But that wasn't helping with my little bit of weight gain that I gained from pregnancy. So when I went online and I was looking up articles on how to reduce belly fat and how to regain energy, everything pointed to the same thing. It's the same general concept. Eat more fruits and veggies, drink more water, and exercise consistently. But for me, even though it started off as I just want to look cute in my clothes, I did notice that my energy level changed when I was eating better. And I think for a lot of people, they, they, they do it for maybe a week. Some of them may even do it for two weeks. But then somewhere down the line, they kind of trickle off because they don't have the support to keep them going. And so that's where you see people. And I, I know you guys all know this. You see your friends do it. I'm sure you've done it. That's where you see people with this up and down roller coaster ride. And it, if anything, it wreaks more havoc on your metabolism than if you were to just remain consistent with a healthier lifestyle just for, for the long term, as opposed to saying, well, I'm gonna go on this apple cider vinegar diet today and let's see how it works. Oh, great, I lost 15 pounds in 20 days. And then when you've lost the weight, then you go back to your old eating habits of eating whatever, hamburger helper, hot dogs, whatever it is. And then you gain the weight back and then you go on the next fat diet that you see online. So it's much easier for people to just maintain a standard way of eating and exercising that they can do for the long term. People will assume that because I'm toned that I'm exercising all the time. I don't exercise every day. I'm exercising about every other day. And when I'm exercising, it's never no longer than an hour, ever, ever. <laughs> but people assume that because you're toned or you're fit, that, that must mean that you exercise every day and you're in the gym for two to three hours. I don't have time for that. <laughs> I have a lot of other things that I'm doing in my day. So when I tell you that you don't have to expend all your energy towards eating healthy 
all the time and exercising three hours a day. I'm telling you from experience, but I'm also telling you from knowing how my clients have also lost weight as well. I have a client, she's not on, the, she's not on this call right now, but she hurt her knee. She's in um, our Facebook group. She hurt her knee last January and she couldn't exercise and she was kind of pissed about it because she had just started working with me and she was ready to go all out. She was ready to start working out and start eating healthy because it's January, the time that you're supposed to work out and eat healthy, just like everybody else on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or what have you. And she hurt her knees, she couldn't do it. But what she noticed is that just by changing her eating habits, she was able to start losing weight. And she consistently lost weight just by changing her eating habits with no exercising. She couldn't exercise. It wasn't a matter of well, I don't feel like doing it today, or I do feel like doing it today. She just couldn't because her knee wouldn't allow for it, and her doctors definitely wasn't going to approve it. So when people talk about it's 80% nutrition and 20% exercise, that's absolutely right. If you, if you want to achieve your goals and then sustain them, really your nutrition is, is what's key. But I'm going to talk to you guys about um, different, different techniques that I've used consistently over the years and that other people have used so that they're not overindulging during the holidays. What you're going to notice is that when you go to other people's houses and they have these snakes, uh, these uh, snacks and, and pies and cakes and all that, you're going to notice that if you indulge on your favorite treat. So for me, that would be red velvet cake. If I go to your house and you have red velvet cake, I'm going to eat it. I'm not going to just sit there and look at it and say, oh, that's pretty. No, I'm going to eat it. <laughs> but if you pay attention to how your body feels after you've consumed that cake or that cookies or whatever it is, pay attention to how your body feels. I want you guys to do this starting this weekend. Pay attention to how your body feels because within about 30 to 30 to 60 minutes, no longer than 90 minutes, you're going to probably say to yourself, gosh, I'm hungry. I want something to eat. That's within 30, 60 minutes. And that's even with eating half the cake. Let's say they had a whole sheet cake and you ate half of it. You're thinking of it in terms of it's, uh, it's a lot of calories, so it should sustain you. But I promise you, within about 30 to 60 minutes, you are going to be hungry looking for your next fix. And what happens for a lot of time, for a lot of people is they'll be out shopping, right? They're doing the Christmas shopping or the Black, uh, what is it called? Black Friday shopping. So they eat some kind of high sugar treat like danishes or in some cases a bagel with cream cheese, anything that's a high starch with a lot of sugar in it. They, they eat their danish or their, their, um, their bagel to hold them over to go shopping. And then they start to notice that, oh, I'm not even a quarter of the way down my shopping. I need to go get something to eat. And then they go to whatever is convenient, whether that, hey, Misha, hi, can you see and hear me? <laughs> so we're just talking about the, um, we're just talking about like the normal holiday, holiday shopping um, cycle. People will start their morning off with breakfast of Danish or a sweet treat, like a bagel with cream cheese. And they mm -hmm. notice within about 30 minutes of shopping that they need to now go and get another fill up, essentially, because the body operates in such a way that it's fed off of nutrients. If you're not eating enough nutritious food at, at that morning snack or that morning meal, your body is going to say, okay, I got a little bit of energy to go, but yes. within about 30, 60 minutes, I need a lot more than that because your body really feeds off of nutrition. So Misha, I told them to get a scrap piece of paper and a pen. Okay. And I'm going to give you guys. I'm going to give you guys some quick tips, and all of this because you came on late. All of this is centered around on how not to spend more, drink more, eat more, and just stress less in general. Okay. Okay. All right. So, and if you guys have questions down in the, the um, bottom of your screen, there's a little chat feature. Write your questions in there, and then I'll get to it as I can. All right. So the first. The first uh, tip I want to give to you is to make sure that before you go to anybody's house or go to any, any store to start your shopping, make sure that you eat before you go. But don't 
eat a high carbohydrate food like Danish or cream cheese, like Danish with cream cheese or or a uh, um, piece of cake or anything that's high in sugar because of what I just said. Within about 30 minutes, probably by the time you get to that store, you're going to be hungry. And a lot of people have the perception of, I'm not going to eat before I go to somebody's party because the reason why I'm going to the party is so that I can have fun and indulge. Mm. But, but take notice of what I just said. I'm going to ask you guys this question. When, the last time anybody can, can answer this. The last time that you overindulged, think about, don't, don't answer yet, but just think about it. The last time that you overindulged, how did you feel after you basically went into a food coma? So you overindulged, you ate too much, your stomach is full, you're bloated. How did you feel after you ate too much? Anybody want to respond? Mm. Can you hear me? Yeah, some of you are on mute, but go ahead. go ahead. Is that Brittany? Yeah, it's me. Um, normally, when I eat a bunch of carbs and stuff like this, like I said, I I feel good when I eat it. Then, like after I eat it for like ten minutes later, I start feeling sick. <laughs> so it, the the idea of it was better than how it tasted, and I. I tend to get like sluggish and tired and want to lay down, especially like stuff that's high in fat. Okay. Anybody else? Mm. And that tends to be a very common answer. You the and she she said it exactly right. She she said the idea of it was good, but then. Once she actually consumed it and let a little bit of time go by, her body didn't really handle it the same way that she expected it to be handled. So, you, so a lot of times people will say, well, I'm going to get this quick fix so that I can feel full, but you're not satisfied within about 30 to 60 minutes afterwards. And, and in Brittany's case, she said about 10 minutes later. But before you go anywhere, make sure that you eat before you go. It doesn't have to be a full meal, obviously, because you're going to somebody's party for a meal. But make sure you're, you're eating something small. It could be almonds or a trail mix. It could be a uh, boiled egg if you eat eggs. It could be just drinking more water. Sometimes filling up on water beforehand will decrease your hunger because not, not too many people realize this, but the same mechanism in your brain that tells you that you're hungry is the same mechanism in your brain that also tells you that you're thirsty. A lot of people don't realize that. So they think they're hungry and then they go for food, but really they're just thirsty. They're dehydrated. So consuming more water before you go to the party or you go out shopping is going to help you as well. Secondly, many people like to drink alcohol when they go to these parties. Instead of drinking alcohol that has very little nutritional value to it, some people have opted to do things like have soda water and just add fruit to it. So it still gives that same bubbly taste, but you're not, but, so you're getting more nutri more nutrients in it than if you were to just drink, I don't know, I like Moscato myself. So if you were to just drink a Moscato compared to sparkling water, sparkling soda water with some mangoes and strawberries and cherries infused into it, you're gonna get more nutrients from that soda water than you are the Moscato. So that's another way to feel like you're drinking something of pleasure to your taste buds, but you're not adding on a bunch of excess calories that are not going to even be nutritious for you. When people think of excess calories, you also want to, at some point, feed your body with some nutrients <laughs> during the process. So that's one way of doing that without feeling like, oh, okay, let me go ahead with my bottle of water while everybody else is enjoying bubbly. And <laughs> you know, that's, one little technique that some people have used to still feel like they're a part of the festivities that are going on. And to tell you the truth, people are very responsive to healthy alternatives if it tastes good. So if it's a party that you're hosting, let's say you're not going to somebody else's, it's a party that you're hosting, try that. Try offering soda water or like sparkling water with fruit and you'll notice that people are going to drink that just the same way that they would drink that alcohol that's sitting right next to it. People assume that others want the alcohol, but 
that's because people only make that available. You, they only make the sugar drinks or the alcohol or the, uh, what do you call it? The, like the hot chocolate available. They're assuming that there's other people there that don't want the, the water. That's not always the case. They're just going to pick whatever you put out for them to drink. All right, you guys, this is key. When, well, first let me ask, how many of you are stuck in traffic on a day-to-day -day basis? No. Nobody? A couple of you said yes. I heard, I heard a couple of yeses. If you're stuck in traffic on a day-to-day -day basis, or if you're not stuck in traffic on a day-to-day -day basis, when you start going out holiday shopping, you probably will be stuck in traffic. <laughs> so... <laughs> Get in the habit of taking a audio, uh, like an audio book with you and just having it in your car to listen to when you are stuck in traffic. Because when you're in traffic, you're thinking about, I need to hurry up and get to my destination as quick as possible. These people are pissing me off. They don't know how to drive. And you tend to then feed cortisol into your body. So let's just say you're one of the people that's on this, on this, um, this webinar right now. And you say, well, I already eat healthy. So you're not really telling me a whole lot because I already eat healthy as is, but you could eat carrots, radishes, <laughs> strawberries, drink water all day long, all that good stuff. And if you have a lot of stress in your atmosphere and your life, a lot of that healthy eating, is not helping towards some health conditions that you could have, underlying health conditions that you could have. So one of the ways of doing that is to feed your mind. And in order to feed your mind, you need to be around people that are one, uplifting and positive, but two, listen to things that are uplifting and positive. So many of you have heard of Tony Robbins, for example. Mm -hmm. Tony Robbins has plenty of audio books that you can put in your car and listen to while you're stuck in traffic and what it's going to do is it's going to soothe that part of your brain that says, I'm actually relaxed regardless of my external circumstances because he's feeding you nothing but positive thoughts. So yes, you are still stuck in that traffic, but instead of your brain going to, I'm stressed out, these people are getting on my nerves, I need to hurry to get to my destination, you're feeding your mind with how to be a better person. And that right there in and of itself is going to calm you down so that you're not, you're not now stressed and then rush it to the next Burger King that you see down the street because you now need your comfort or your convenience food. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's something that a lot of people don't do. And really, whether you're in traffic or not, I would get in the habit of doing that anyway on a day-to-day -day basis during the entire holiday season. You, if you think about it, the holiday season, it's six weeks long. That's six weeks long of having continual daily stress. Feeding your mind right before bed or first thing in the morning when you wake up with something soulfully uplifting is going to ease a lot of that frustration that you're going to have throughout the day anyway, whether you're in two hours of traffic every day or not. Next thing, how many of you have signed up for a 5K race or any other type of physical activity during the holiday season ever? I have. I do. Who's that? Misha. Okay. So when you have a goal to look forward to, if you know you're going to run the turkey trap on Thanksgiving morning or whatever, Santa Claus run on Christmas Day, your likelihood of indulging in an abundance of snacks and things that are unhealthy for you significantly decreases because you have – a healthy goal in mind to look forward to. Nobody wants to say, I'm going to go run a 5K race and mm -hmm. come at last place. There are some people that go out and just walk it. They walk the entire way. But just having a physical goal in mind that keeps you physically active and, and excited for that goal mm -hmm. will help you when it comes down to, there's a huge red velvet cake in front of me. I'm going to consume <laughs> <laughs> you know? So just having that in place, and like I said, some, some people have knee problems, some people have different you know, physical ailments that keep them from being able to exercise like some other people can. Mm -hmm. That's okay. You can get down and walk. I did a 5K, and there were some people that were in wheelchairs. So it's no excuse. <laughs> you can get out there and walk. But just having that goal in place is going to help you progress through the hospital. How many of you have an accountability partner? That's number five. 
Marie said you have a Brittany. Okay. Anybody else? Raise, just raise your hand if you have an accountability partner. Accountability partner increases. I always tell you guys this if, if you pay attention to some of my posts. Accountability partners increase your chances of sticking to any plan by 75%. Okay. 75%. That's a lot. 75%. I'm saying it again. 75%. <laughs> that's a lot. Just having an accountability partner. Now, I don't mean somebody that is like, girl, you look good. Just have that cake. Because sometimes <laughs> you have those friends that just say what they want, it, want you to hear, <laughs> you know? But is that really helping you in terms of meeting your goal of not gaining 20 pounds by the end of that six week of the holiday season? No, it's not. You need somebody that is going to be like, let's go to the gym together let's you know compare healthy recipes and i have y'all you know sharing different health, healthy recipes in my facebook group it's gonna help hold you accountable and do it in such a way that they're not judging you for your actions like when i'm working with my clients i don't judge them for eating you know burger king one day i have them send me pictures of what they eat I don't judge them for eating burger king one day what i do is i say okay well let's look at what the trigger was so that we can avoid that trigger later let's look at what you could do as an alternative for later because why am i crying over spilt milk you already ate it <laughs> you know so that's what we do we look at the triggers so if you have an accountability partner that can say to you hey let's do this together and you have somebody to hold your hand i'm pretty self-motivated you guys and just about two weeks ago i was working with a friend of mine who's a personal trainer and i would say hey I want to decrease the amount of sugar that I'm eating because for the last few days I've been eating like cake almost every day, which is acceptable in the sense of I'm eating a lot of other healthy food and I'm staying consistent with my exercise. But when I consume it too long, for too long a period of time, my energy level does decrease some. And so I wanted to reduce my sugar so I can get my energy back up and, you know, keep myself revitalized, smooth skin and all that good stuff. So even myself that's self-motivated, I have an accountability partner. So how much more somebody that is just starting off to the health and fitness lifestyle, you know? And I think a lot of times people forget that fitness models <laughs> even have accountability partners. They don't stay that way by just being accountable to only themselves. They are accountable to a team of people that help support them. So when people say to me, you know, I don't, have anybody that I'm working with to help me lose weight or to maintain my weight or in some people's case gain weight I've had clients that wanted to gain weight you know when they don't have somebody helping them through that process their likelihood of continuing on is significantly decreased <laughs> all right so seek out an accountability partner whether that's online or that somebody in your church or somebody in your neighborhood just somebody that's a like mind that you can hold hands with through the holiday season Next thing, this is more pertinent to holiday gatherings. Some people have family members that within about five minutes, you were in a great mood and five minutes later, you feel like you want to go punch a punching bag. <laughs> so in those instances, and that's often the case, a lot of times, you know, especially when you go online, people are posting their happy pictures of family gatherings. Oh, we're having such a beautiful time together. And for a lot of people, the, the majority of the time is a beautiful gathering, but you do have some family members that kind of suck the energy out of you. So knowing this, before you go into holiday season, ask yourself, who are those people that when I'm around them, I feel a sense of energy gain? And now who are those people that when I'm around them, they suck my energy? Because you have to have time limits on how you're spending your time. If you know you're always pissed off when you're around Uncle Charles, well then instead of avoiding Uncle Charles completely, just set a time limit on it. Say I'm only gonna be in his presence or at his house for an hour and then I gotta go. As opposed to saying I'm gonna be there for four hours and be pissed off the entire time. <laughs> when you think back on it, people really just wanna see you show up. They don't really care that you spent the entire day with them even if you showed up so if you can only handle an hour of spending time at uncle charles house then just spend an hour at uncle charles house and going about your day i think that people have a tendency to think that they have to and this is the overindulgence of time people have a tendency of thinking that they have to overcommit 
to people when people don't have that same expectation on you that you think that you should be giving. So be very conscious of the time that you're spending around certain family members or certain friends or in certain environments that are going to suck and drain your energy. Next thing, you guys, make sure that if you are, if you are um, in a family, if some of you have kids, if you're in a family that you spend quality time with just the people in your family, so when I say that, I mean with just your partner or with just your grandchildren or with just your, your children that you're, you're taking care of. Spend quality time with those people because a lot of our attention tends to be very outward directed. And when I say outward directed, I'm talking about things like, I need to go buy this person and this person holiday gifts. But I'm avoiding spending time with my family. <laughs> you know, I'm so focused on everybody else, but I'm avoiding spending time with my family because but what normally happens, and you guys probably know this, when you're around your immediate family and you're doing something together like ice skating or you're going to the movies together or whatever it is, you tend to, when you're finished with that activity, you're, you tend to feel more energized. And that's because you're doing something as a collective unit. So if your attention is always focused on what I got to do for everybody else, oh, I got to cook for the potluck at work. I got to buy all these people these holiday gifts. I got to go out and make sure that I decorate for the church. If your attention is consistently focused on all those external people and you're, you're giving very minimal attention to the people that are right there in your immediate circle, you're going to feel that once stress then hits you, there's not going to be anybody there in your family to help you because everybody's off doing their own little thing. So spend a lot of quality time trying to just, just savor the moments with your immediate people, whether that's you're living with your family or you're living with friends as a roommate, whatever that is, just your, your immediate people in your small circle. Am I going too fast? Okay. I have one more tip. And this one is very key. You guys recognize what your triggers are. And when I say triggers, I mean, what are those foods that make you, and I'm going to have Brittany talk on this in a second. You guys, I was going to have a female talk about her 80 pound uh, weight loss that she had this year. I'm going to have to do another webinar. I'm going to do it as like an interview with her. She messaged me, her name is Shibori. She's in our group. She messaged me and said that she had to take her daughter to the emergency room today. I, so I was going to read, I have her bio right here. I was going to read her bio and I was going to have her, ask um I'm a, i was gonna ask her a few questions but i'm gonna do that in, an, in another webinar so if you guys can participate in that i would be appreciative I, she mm -hmm. wants to be able to share her story so i want to be able to allow her to do that oh, cool. but um i'm gonna have Brittany talk on this next thing in just a second real quickly know what your triggers are and when i say no know, know what your triggers are is i mean know what foods give you energy and which foods drain your energy essentially so Brittany, I, I, I started talking to Brittany probably about a month ago. It was in October. This is now November. I started talking to Brittany about a month ago. I gave her a simple metabolism type assessment. And from that assessment, Brittany said that she had not worked out. <laughs> but from that simple assessment, she's lost 10 pounds in the time that we've talked to each other, which was just a month ago. I don't even know if it's been like five weeks. It was literally just like October. So know what your triggers are. Part of knowing what your triggers are is to identify them through knowing what types of foods give you energy and what types of foods drain your energy. Brittany, just real quick, because Mauricia has to go in a couple minutes. Brittany, real quick, can you just share anything about your, um, oh, thanks, I see the congratulations from me to everybody. <laughs> can you real quickly give anything of value to us about your experience after you did the metabolism type assessment? Um, so after I did the metabolism assessment, um, basically what I did was I stopped eating so many carbs, like eating french fries and cereal, and started eating more, um, even though I'm, I'm protein type, I still, I still eat oatmeal in the morning sometimes, but I also eat um, like a sausage or a bacon with it. I haven't been doing anything like too healthy, like working out, but I do, um, I do um, try to like, 
do more walking, drink more water, and stop. I stop eating like fast food so much. But what I do with fast food is like you know how you when you go to a McDonald's and order a, a number one, and you eat it and you get semi full or you get satisfied after like eating half of it, but you finish it anyways because you pay for it. <laughs> what I do with my fiance like we now we order one meal, split it in half, and she <laughs> satisfied from eating just you know half of a value meal at a, um, a restaurant um that that also helped a lot and i i still breastfeed so that probably helps more too but you know any anything that you that you want that like that's not healthy for you what i do i try to drink water first because like she said water could be a trigger to say that i'm hungry but really you could just be thirsty so I drink water in the morning or before I eat a meal, before I try to, you know, overindulge in eating one one meal because one of my problems was um, eating too much. Like, you know how you eat something, then, like I said, you finish it because it's there. So I try to drink water first and then eat smaller portions. And that's helped a lot. Like I said, I've lost 10 pounds just from doing that alone. So no exercise. Yeah, and that's kind of like what I was talking about earlier with the client that I was working with last January. She wasn't happy that she couldn't exercise, but because she was implementing a lot of the techniques that we talked about, she was able to lose weight. And and I think she couldn't go back to exercising until like eight to ten weeks later. But every week she was steadily losing weight because she was implementing what I talked about. And you guys, I am not about depriving yourself so when i say that i mean i'm not about let's eat salad all day every day <laughs> to lose weight because how long does that last all of you know that doing it that route you're going to lose it maybe in a week but then you're right back to your old eating habits so i look at how can we make it sustainable for the long term and part of that is through doing, you guys have probably heard me several times talk about the metabolism type assessment, but I keep talking about it because it wasn't until I started giving that to people that they started to see bigger results quicker. So I keep talking about it because you go online and you see, I was trained in over a hundred dietary theories. So let me put this into perspective. I was trained in over a hundred dietary theories. So right there that tells you there's over a hundred different ways that people can eat. Mm -hmm. However, there's different results that come with these different dietary theories. They don't all work the same for everybody. But when people start implementing the techniques from the metabolism type assessment, they start to get results much quicker. And that was without having to do a lot of rigorous exercise. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go do CrossFit now so that I can lose it. So I'm saying all that to say that if you guys at any point in time when you have friends at any point in time say, you know, I'm doing everything that I can, but I can't seem to break a plateau or I'm trying to get different results so that I could just feel better because not everybody I'll talk to wants to lose weight. Some of them just want to feel better. Keep the, keep the metabolism type assessment in mind. I don't know how many of you, and you know what? I don't tell everybody this because I only really like to work with people that are serious <laughs> so i don't necessarily tell everybody this but if you've noticed in the group i have a um i have a uh, couple posts about the upcoming 14 day boot camp the nutrition boot camp and in that boot camp i share secrets on what i've done that you don't necessarily find on Google. Some of them you find on Google, but you don't find everything on Google because Google, a lot of times, it's marketers that are trying to say, let's lose 15 pounds in 15 minutes mentality. So they give you kind of like bogus techniques. <laughs> so some of this you don't find on Google. Some of this I just based off of my experience and other people's experience. So if you've noticed, I've been talking about 14 day nutrition boot camp that's coming up. It's basically, Four weeks of content is if I was working with you one-on-one, -on -one, condensed into four, 14 days. But it's done in such a way that I get straight to the point. I don't believe in a lot of fluff. <laughs> so the reason why I can push it into 14 days is because I condense it into the just straight, direct points that you need. And then I focus on mindset as well. A lot of times with these different programs out there, the missing piece is mindset techniques. So I get into mindset techniques. The reason why 
this particular program works for a lot of people is because they're doing it in a group setting. So I give two Q&A sessions. There are going to be two live Q&A sessions where I'm answering whatever questions that you guys have. Also, I'm allowing you to ask me questions through text or email for that entire 14 days so that you're held accountable every single day for 14 days. But one of the things I don't tell people is that people that have already registered know this, but the people that, um, the, the first 10 people that sign up are getting the metabolism type assessment for free. I'm not charging for that. The reason why I don't tell everybody that is because I really want people in the program that are dedicated to being in the program, not in it just because, oh, I want a free I want for them to be people that have decided for themselves, this is something that I feel is beneficial to me. You guys have that same opportunity as well. You, if you start, I only have, you know what? I think today, today is the 12th. There's two more days in the, in the early bird period. I'm extending the early bird period, maybe one additional day because we had a little tech glitch a couple days ago. So I may extend it to the 15th. It's $57 for the early bird period. The assessment, the metabolism type assessment that I normally give is generally $57 for the basic one and $77 for the detailed one. And I'm giving that to 10 people away for free. So basically you're getting about $600 worth of value in, in for just $57 if you register by the 14th. So if any of you want that link to register, I would say like hop on it as soon as possible if you haven't already. I, I have to check my I have to check my email again and my and my uh, PayPal again. If anybody that's interested, let me give you guys jot my phone number down because I want to make sure that that I don't forget about you. Jot my phone number down real quickly and message me if you're interested in it, and I'll message you the the, uh, the PayPal button so that you have that. My number is eight one three. Six zero zero nine zero three one. So again, it's eight one three six zero zero nine zero three one. And then just send me a message saying, "Hey, I want the uh, PayPal link, and I'll send that over to you." But it's something that's very. I'm very straight and direct. I don't do all the Let's talk mm -hmm. about this over here when really you want results over here. <laughs> so I try to make sure that I put information in there that is very straight, direct to the point, but also not forgetting the mindset piece because you can have all the knowledge in the world, but if your if your mind isn't there, then you're less likely to keep it going for the long term. So I, I did throw some mindset stuff in there just to help people from the psychological standpoint. Do you guys have any questions or anything to add that we didn't talk about? I'm going to do a quick game before you guys go. It's a quick game. Stay with me just for a minute. And for people that are listening to the replay, I'm going to end the meeting so that this is not wasting their time. <laughs> guys, stay tight one second. Thank you guys for showing up. I appreciate you for showing up. One second. Oh, whoops. <laughs>